Good morning everyone. Welcome to this session. This is our second lecture. In our previous lecture, we have talked about integration of real valued functions and complex variable function, concept of line integral and we solved some examples on line integrals. In this session, we are going to discuss some important basic definitions simply connected region, multi connected region, analytic function, singular point and Taylor's theorem, Lorentz theorem and types of singularities and Cauchy's integral theorem, Cauchy's integral formula. First of all, let us see what is line integral. In our previous lecture already we have discussed this. What is line integral? Integration of f of z along any curve integration of f of z complex valued function f of z along any curve c is called line integral. So, it is denoted by integral c f of z dz. Already we have seen it is denoted by integral c f of z dz. Here this curve c may be closed curve or may be open curve. Here this may be curve c from a to b. In some questions we have evaluated line integral along oa along ab and along BO also we can evaluate. So, you can find this integration line integral along open or closed curves. But in particular, if we see integration along any closed curve, that is called counter integral. So, whenever you are finding line integral along any closed curve, that is called counter integral. So, here integration along closed curve C is called counter integral. What is closed curve? Here if these points A and B coincide with each other, we get a closed curve C. So, integration along this closed curve is called counter integral and it is denoted by, we can denote this counter integral by counter integral C f of z dz. If you put a circle here on this integral sign, then that represents counter integration. So, counter integration means what? Integration along a closed curve. Now, there are so many methods to find counter integral. So, first method is by direct integration of f of z along the curve in the complex plane, we can find counter integral or by applying Cauchy's formula, we can find counter integral or by applying residue theorem, we can find counter integral. So, let us see these methods one by one. So, let us solve one example uh, using this direct integration method. So, here let us see, see this example. Evaluate evaluate counter integral 1 by z dz along the curve mod z equal to 1. So, here if you see this mod z equal to 1 is a circle because here what is z? z equal to x plus i y. Then what is mod z? Mod z is square root of x square plus y square. Re square root of real part square plus imaginary part square gives modulus of z. So, here what is given? Mod z equal to 1 mod z equal to 1 
that means root x square plus y square equal to 1. Now squaring on both sides you get x square plus y square equal to 1 square. What is this? Equation of a circle. You have studied this in your 12th standard. Equation of circle. Now center this is equation of circle with center. at origin and radius 1. So here right side number this represents radius. So radius is 1 and center is 0 0 origin. Now if we draw that circle here. Here this is center radius is 1. So, here on this axis, theta is 0. Here, theta equal to pi by 2. Theta equal to pi. Here, 3 pi by 2. And theta equal to 2 pi again. Here. Right. Now, here given curve is a circle with center at the origin and radius 1. Now let us convert this integrand into polar coordinates. So here z equal to x plus i y can be written as if you convert it into exponential form this is r e power i theta. r is radius so radius is 1 so we can write 1 into e power i theta this is z. Now dz equal to if you differentiate this on both sides we get dz equal to i into e power i theta d theta because derivative of e power i theta i theta is i e power i theta d theta. Now we have to take limits for theta. So here for this one rotation theta takes 360 degree right 2 pi degree. So theta changes from theta equal to 0 to theta equal to 2 pi along the circumference of on the along the circumference of the circle. So here limits are theta equal to limits are theta equal to 0 to theta equal to 2 pi. Now this counter integral counter integral 1 by z dz can be written as integral 0 to 2 pi now we have to write z in terms of theta. So z equal to e power i theta into dz is i e power i theta d theta. Now here e power i theta, e power i theta will get cancelled. We get integral 0 to 2 pi i into d theta. That is i into integral d theta is theta under the limits 0 to 2 pi. When you apply upper limit, you get i into 2 pi minus lower limit 0, which gives 2 pi i. So, in this manner, we can evaluate any counter integral by direct integration. But using remaining two methods, we can evaluate any counter integral very easily. But to understand those two uh, concepts, uh, means to apply before applying those Cauchy's theorem and residue theorem first we should know the statements of those theorems. So statements of those theorems they involve some basic important points. So what are those basic important points? So first let us see those. Those are multi connected simply connected region multi-connected region, simply connected region because those statements we state those Cauchy's in theorem and residue theorem by considering a analytic function and also in simply connected region, in multi-connected region and also we find uh, singular points of 
that analytic function. So first you should understand what is simply connected region, what is multi-connected region and what is uh, analytic function. So analytic function already we have discussed in unit 5 but these definitions let us revise. Simply connected region, multi-connected region, analytic function, analytic function, singular point, and here Taylor's theorem by using Lorentz theorem we can find these singular points so we have to discuss even these theorems also Taylor's theorem Lorentz theorem and types of singularities we can find these singularities and we can explain these singularities using Lorentz theorem types of singularities. So all these points we should uh, uh, revise first. So let us see these one by one. So already we have seen what is closed curve closed curve is when starting point and ending point of the curve coincide then that curve is called a closed curve. So this is closed curve C. Now simply connected region. What is simply connected region? Simply connected region means the region which has no holes. See if I draw like this. This is a simply connected region. Simply connected region. Okay let us say C1 and C2. Because there is here if you start drawing this curve. If you put your pen here, without lifting this pen, you can draw this curve. Such curves are, such regions are called simply connected regions. The region which has no holes. The region which has no holes is called simply connected or you can say every point of this curve every point or all the interior points of the closed curve C drawn in the region R R points of the region R so here if you consider every point any point within this closed curve there should be points of this region R. So such types of curves are called simply connected regions. Such regions are called simply connected regions. Now let us see what is multi connected region. Here without holes means what here if you observe curve like this this is this is called a hole. Okay. So here any curve without holes is a simply connected region. Now let us see multi connected region. Multi connected region. 
here if there are so many curves here here multi connected region is bounded by more than one curves multi connected region is bounded by more than one curve or simply we can say the region or the region which has poles is called multi connected region multi connected region so here if you see if this is some curve c1 and this is curve c2 here it, it is whole region is bounded by curve c1 as well as curve c2 so here if you see like this if this is a curve c if this is curve c1 if this is c2 so this region is bounded by four curves c1 c2 c3 and c here this region is bounded by c1 and c2 such regions are called multi connected regions but multi connected regions um, can be converted to simply connected regions by making cuts here that means here if you cut this curve that means here if you cut this what do you get like this cut then here if you cut this here one cut here one cut and here one cut okay and here like this and okay these are the these are cut if you join these two what does it mean here curve is like this right if you cut here and if you cut here if you cut here then along this cut it it will be opened right then it looks like this so now this became simply connected region now this is simply connected region right so without lifting our pen we can draw this whole curve so this is simply connected region so we can make or we can convert any multi connected region into simply connected uh, region by drawing these cuts understood so this is multi connected region now what is next definition is analytic function analytic function so what is analytic function we have seen this definition in our fifth unit any function any complex variable function f of z is said to be analytic if function is differentiable at every point of the domain so here you can define this as this is also called holomorphic function or regular function we can define this as a function f of z a function f of z is analytic a function f of z is analytic at a point z not if it is differentiable not only at z not but also at every point of its neighborhood what does it mean if there is 
any domain if z naught is here if z naught is here so function is differentiable at z naught and at every neighborhood means the points which are near to this z naught so at all these points if function fz is analytic differentiable not analytic so here if a function fz is differentiable at z naught as well as at all neighborhood points of the z naught then f of z is called analytic function now here a function f z is analytic in a domain d if you consider a domain d here if you see this domain let us say this is domain d if this function f z is analytic in this domain then f z is differentiable at every point of this domain if f z is differentiable at every point of this domain then f z is analytic in this domain now if f z is analytic is if f z is differentiable at every point of the domain d then fz is analytic in the domain d if we consider a complex region that means here x here y this is real axis this is imaginary axis imaginary axis if fz is differentiable at every point of this complex plane this is complex plane if fz is differentiable at every point of this complex plane then fz is called entire function here fz is called entire function if fz is analytic at every point of the complex plane analytic means what it should be differentiable at every point of this complex plane so here entire function every entire function is analytic but not vice versa that means every analytic function may not be entire every analytic function may not be entire function but every entire function is analytic and every analytic function is differentiable every analytic function is differentiable but not vice versa that means every differentiable function may not be analytic and every differentiable function is continuous every differentiable function is continuous but not vice versa okay so every entire function entire function means what function should be analytic at every point of this on this complex plane so every entire function is analytic but not every analytic function is entire and every analytic function is differentiable but every differentiable function is not analytic and every differentiable function is continuous but every continuous function is not differentiable now let us see 
here we can check this uh, whether the function of z is analytic or not by cauchy riemann equations we have studied that in our fifth unit so here we can find we can check fz is analytic or not by cr equations so here cr equations if fz satisfies cr equations here fz satisfies cr equations if its partial derivatives are continuous that means if fz has continuous partial derivatives partial derivatives which are continuous then if that satisfy cauchy riemann equations if fz has continuous partial derivatives that satisfy cr equations cauchy riemann equations then that satisfy cr equations then fz is analytic so what are these cr equations cr equations are cauchy riemann equations are fz equal to sorry cauchy riemann equations are dou u by dou x equal to dou v by dou y and dou u by dou y equal to minus of dou v by dou x these are cauchy riemann equations if any function fz has continuous partial derivatives that means if these partial derivatives dou u by dou x dou u dou v by dou y dou u by dou y dou v by dou x these partial derivatives are continuous and if they satisfy cauchy riemann equations then the function fz is called analytic function now if we see some examples here if fz equal to e power z that means e power x plus i y since z equal to x plus i y we can write it as e power x into e power i y so here z equal to x plus i y right now this is e power x into e power i y can be written as cos y plus i sin y since cos theta plus i sin theta equal to e power i theta cos theta plus i sin theta okay now here if you open this bracket e power x cos y plus i into e power x sin y so let us say this one as u and this one as v so here u equal to e power x cos y and v equal to e power x sin y so let us find partial derivatives dou u by dou x dou u by dou y dou u by dou x equal to derivative of e power x dou by dou x of e power x into cos y that is e power x into cos y okay dou u by dou y equal to e power x into dou by dou y of cos y which is equal to minus e power x sin y because derivative of cos y d by dx of cos x equal to minus sin x and d by dx of sin x equal to cos x and d by dx of e power x equal to e power x now using these differentiation formula we can find these partial derivatives now let us find dou v by dou x dou v by dou x equal to 
dou by dou x of e power x into sin y, which is equal to e power x sin y. Now, dou v by dou y equal to e power x into dou by dou y of sin y, which is equal to e power x cos y. Now, if you observe, dou u by dou x and dou v by dou y, both are same. Here, this one. What is this? Dou u by dou x. And here, dou v by dou y. These are equal. And if we observe dou u by dou y minus e power x sin y, and here implies minus dou v by dou x equal to minus dou v by dou x equal to implied minus of dou v by dou x equal to minus of e power x sin y. So, if you observe this here, this one is minus e power x sin y. Here this is minus dou v by dou x. Here dou u by dou y. So, what are Cauchy Riemann equations? Dou u by dou x equal to dou v by dou y and dou u by dou y equal to minus of dou v by dou x. So, that means here dou u by dou x equal to dou v by dou y and dou u by dou y equal to minus of dou v by dou x. So, Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied. So, here f of z equal to e power z is analytic function. This is analytic function. And these derivatives are continuous uh, derivatives. Here, dou u by dou x is continuous because all these are continuous functions. And if you uh, check, if you cross check these Cauchy Riemann equations, they are satisfied. So, f of z equal to e power z is analytic function. Now, if we see one more example, if you see f of z equal to z square upon z minus 1, if the, this function, if you put z equal to 1, then f of z equal to, what do you get when you put z equal to 1? z square by 1 minus 1, which is equal to z square by 0, which is infinity. We can't define this function f of z. If we can't define this f of z, then there is no question of differentiability. So, here f of z is not analytic at z equal to 1. So, here f of z is not analytic at z equal to 1. It may be analytic at other points, but it is not analytic at z equal to 1. Okay. So, if f of z is not analytic at any point, that point is called a singular point. So, let us move to next definition. Singular point. Here, singular point means if f z is not analytic at some neighborhood of neighborhood of z naught then z naught is called a singular point. Here, if f z is not analytic at some neighborhood of z naught means what? Here, function should be differentiable first. If it is differentiable, then that function is analytic. So, here, if you consider a point z naught, then here, if f of z is analytic at z naught, that means differentiable at z naught, and at some neighborhood, at some point in its neighborhood, if f z is not differentiable, it is, if it is not analytic, then here z naught is called a singular point. Okay. So, here there are uh, different types of singular points. 
isolated singular point and non isolated singular point here if fz is analytic and then at every point in its neighborhood it is differentiable right so here if fz is not analytic means fz is not differentiable at some neighborhood of z0 then z0 is called a singular point now here if z f of z is not analytic at z0 if it is not differentiable at z0 itself then if fz is not analytic at z0 then z0 is a singular point if fz is not analytic at z0 even then fz is z0 is a singular point that means fz may be not analytic at z0 at or it may be not analytic at uh, some neighborhood of z0 then z0 is called a singular point okay now singular points are classified into two types those are isolated singular points isolated singularity or singular points non isolated singularity so here singular points are classified into two types isolated singular points and non isolated singular points again isolated singularities are classified into three types removable isolated singularities removable isolated singularities and second one is pole and third one is essential singularities so here removable singularity pole and essential singularity because to state cauchy's theorem we should know what is analytic function and what is singularity what is pole all these so before discussing cauchy's uh, integral formula and residue theorem we are discussing these points first so here singular point means if fz is not analytic at some point z0 or at some point in the neighborhood of z0 then z0 is called a singular point singular points are classified into two types isolated singularity and non isolated singularity here isolated singularities are classified into three types removable singularities and pole and third one is essential singularity so before discussing these uh, singularities let us see what is taylor series and lorentz theorem first because using lorentz theorem we can understand these singularities very clearly so first let us discuss taylor's series taylor series already you know most of you people because in our first year we have studied this taylor series so here in taylor series any function any continuous function any continuous function f of x any continuous function f of x can be expanded using taylor series taylor's series so what is series first of all if there is any function sin x if you want to write sin x in terms of variable x then we can use this taylor series or simply here 
सीरी इज नथिंग बट समेशन ऑफ टर्म्स ऑफ एनी सीक्वेंस ओके हियर इफ यू राइट ए नंबर ट्वेंटी वन सो ट्वेंटी वन कैन बी रिटर्न ए समेशन एन इक्वल टू वन टू सिक्स एन वट इज इट मीन्स वेन एन इक्वल टू वन समेशन मीन्स एडिशन n equal to one plus n equal to two plus n equal to three plus n equal to four plus n equal to five plus n equal to six. So here, what do you get then? Twenty one. So this number has written in the form of series one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. In the same manner, any algebraic function which is continuous can be expanded using Taylor series. Then what is Taylor series? Taylor series is f x equal to Taylor series is f x equal to f of a plus x minus a into f dash of a plus x minus a whole square upon two factorial. Yeah, for double dash a plus so on. Using this Taylor's expansion, we can expand any algebraic function. So e power x can be expanded as one plus x plus x square by two factorial plus x cube by three factorial plus so on. Okay, that means here first you have to find derivatives of e power x. Then you have to put this value of a. Okay. So if you put a equal to zero, then you get e power x equal to one plus x plus x square by two factorial plus x cube by three factorial plus so on. Okay. So here, this is Taylor series. Now, can we expand this complex variable function using Taylor series? Yes, we can. But f of z must be analytic. So here. any analytic function any analytic function f of z can be expanded using taylor series why only analytic function here using taylor series we can expand continuous functions analytic function means analytic function is differentiable every differentiable function is continuous so if fz is analytic fz is continuous so every continuous function can be expanded using taylor series so here we can expand f of z using the f of z equal to f of a plus z minus a into f dash of a plus Z minus a whole square upon two factorial f double dash a plus so on. So using Taylor series, we can expand any analytic function. Okay, if f z is analytic in any curve, in any closed curve, then okay, we can expand it by Taylor series. But if y of z is not analytic at any at some point in the domain, then if y of z is not analytic at some point in the domain, then what is that point called? That point is singular point, right? So here, second one, Lorentz series. So Lorentz series is useful to expand any function which is not analytic. At some point in its domain, here, if y of z is not analytic, or if y of z is not analytic at some point A. in the domain or in the region or then fz can be expanded using
Lorentz series. If Fz is not analytic at some point A, then it can be expanded using Lorentz series. So what is Lorentz series? Let us see here. Lorentz series is Fz equal to A0 plus A1 into Z minus A plus A2 into Z minus A whole square plus A3 into Z minus A whole cube plus so on plus B1 upon Z minus A plus B2 upon Z minus A whole square plus so on. So this can be written as summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n into z minus a raised to n plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity b n upon z minus a raised to n. That means summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n into z minus a raised to n plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity b n into z minus a raised to minus n. So this is Lorentz series. This one is called general term and this one is called principal term. So Lorentz series is combination of general term and principal term. So using Lorentz series, we can explain this singularity or we can find these singular points, isolated singular points using Lorentz series. So here using Lorentz series, we can find isolated singularities. That means removable singularity removable singularity pole and essential singularity essential singularities. Okay. So here first of all what are these singularities? How many types of singularities are there? Let us uh, see again. What are the types? Isolated. Isolated singularity and non-isolated singularity. What is isolated singularity? What is isolated singularity? If there is a point Z0, at which f of z is not analytic, then z0 is called isolated singular point. But if there are some more points in the neighborhood of z0 where f of z is not analytic, here f of z is not analytic at this point, let us say a1 and here a2. If Fz is not analytic even at A1, A2, which are in the neighborhood of Z0, then Z0 is called non-isolated singularity. Here, if Z0 is a only point where F of Z is not analytic, then Z0 is called isolated singular point. So, in isolated singular point, three types, what are they? First one is a removable singularity. What is the meaning of removable singularity? Here, if you adjust this function in such a way or if you redefine this function in such a way that this fz is analytic at this point z0, then that singularity is called removable singularity. Okay, so here using Lorentz series also we can define this removable singularity. Here, if principal part of 
Lorentz series. If principal part of f of z does not exist in Lorentz series, then z equal to z naught or z equal to a is called removable singularity. Okay, so what is Lorentz series? Lorentz series is Lorentz series is f of z equal to summation here n equal to 0 to infinity a n into z minus a raised to n plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity b n upon z minus a raised to n. So here if principal part of f z does not exist, what is principal part? This one is principal part. If this does not exist, then this f of z is here f of z has removable singularity at z equal to a. So if this part vanishes, then we get only this part, only this one. Summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n into z minus a raised to n. Uh, then f z has removable singularity at z equal to a. So you can say in other words also how if series, if f of z contains only positive powers of z, only positive powers of z, then f z has a removable singularity. at z equal to a. Okay. Now, if f z has only positive powers of z, what is it mean f z equal to here summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n into z minus a raised to n. That means here a naught into z minus a raised to 0 plus a 1 into z minus a plus a2 into z minus a whole square plus a3 z minus a whole cube plus so on. z minus a whole cube plus so on. If limit z tends to a, then what happens? If limit z tends to a, then limit z tends to f of z equal to limit z tends to a here a naught here because z minus a raised to 0 means its value is 1. So what do you get? a naught plus a1 into z minus a plus a2 into z minus a whole square plus a3 into z minus a whole cube plus so on. So, when z tends to a, all these terms will become 0, we get a naught here. That means, what does it mean? That is, limit z tends to a, f of z exists and has finite value. So, you can identify this removable singularity. Uh, by any of these three points. That means, if you find the limit of fz by taking z tends to a, if it exists and has finite value, then that singularity is called removable singularity. So, at that singular point, if limit of fz exists and has finite value, then that is removable singularity. Or, if you observe this Lorentz series, if z has positive powers, then directly you can identify uh, without finding the limit, if z has positive powers, then we can say that f z has a removable singularity at that point. Okay, now 
let us see one example on this removable singularity here if sin z let us see one example if f of z equal to sin z upon z then here at z equal to 0 here limit z tends to 0 f of z if you directly if you put value of z here sin 0 by 0 this is indeterminate form indeterminate form we can solve this by using l hospital's rule so this is indeterminate form we are not getting this limit but here if you expand this sin z sin z by z can be written as 1 by z into sin z 1 by z into sin z right but what is sin z sin z value of sin z is z uh, expansion of sin z is z minus z cube by 3 factorial plus z power 5 by 5 factorial plus 1 if we expand sin z using taylor series you get this expansion now if you open this bracket 1 by z into z minus 1 by z into z cube by 3 factorial plus 1 by z into z power 5 by 5 factorial plus 1 which is equal to 1 minus here you cancel this here you cancel this so 1 minus here z square upon 3 factorial plus z power 4 by 5 factorial minus so on now if you apply limit limit z tends to 0 limit z tends to 0 f of z equal to limit z tends to 0 1 minus z square by 3 factorial plus z power 4 by 5 factorial minus so on which is equal to 1. So here limit is existing when we adjust this given function when we redefine this uh, given function by using expansion of sin z we got its limit its limit is 1 limit z tends to 0 f of z is 1. So by modifying or by redefining the function we can remove that singularity so here z equal to 0 is therefore z equal to 0 is a removable singularity of f of z here by equating denominator to 0 you can find singularities by equating denominator of f of z denominator of f of z we can find singularities that means here I have taken z equal to 0, right? How? Here f of z equal to what is given? Sin z upon z. By equating this denominator to 0, you can find the singularity. But whether that singularity is removable or pole, to check that, first we have to check the limit of f of z at this point, z equal to 0. Okay? So, by if that limit exists, then this has removable singularity. If that limit is finite, then this is removable singularity. Here, if you apply this limit directly, we did not get its value. But by redefining the function, we got its limit as 1. So, such type of singularity is called removable singularity. Now, second one is pole. Here, again, let us see Lorentz series. Lorentz series contains general term and principal term n equal to 0 to infinity a n into z minus a raised to n plus summation 
n equal to 1 to infinity bn upon z minus a raised to n. So here pole has finite terms here in this principle here this is general term. Here, this one is called principal term. Okay. So, here first definition of this pole is if principal part of if principal part of Lorentz series Lorentz series has finite number of terms as finite number of terms then z equal to a is called a pool. What is what does it mean? What is the meaning of finite number of terms? What is principal term? Here principal term is summation n equal to 1 to infinity b n upon z minus a raised to n. What does it mean? b1 by z minus a plus b2 by z minus a whole square plus b3 by z minus a whole cube plus so on. This is expansion of this principal term. If it has finite number of terms, that means if some b4, b4 equal to b5 equal to b6 equal to so on equal to 0. If remaining coefficients b4, b5, b6 are zeros, then you get only these three terms b1 by z minus a, b2 by z minus a whole square plus b3 by z minus a whole cube. Then we can say this principal part has finite number of terms. Okay, so if principal part contains finite number of terms, then uh, we get uh, pole. Okay, so uh, z equal to a is called a pole. So here, then z equal to a is called a pole. Because if b4 equal to b5 equal to b6 equal to so on equal to 0, then you get only 3 terms. b1 by z minus a plus b2 by z minus a whole square plus b3 by z minus a whole cube. If only finite number of terms, if only 3 terms exist in this principal part, then z equal to a is called a pole of order 3. There are 3 terms. Then this power, this power is nothing but order of the pole. If only one term exists, then if only b1 is not equal to 0 and b2 equal to b3 equal to so on equal to 0, then even these terms they vanish, then here z equal to a is a pole is a is called a simple pole is called a simple pole okay so we can find these poles by equating denominator to zero if function uh, has uh, polynomials in its numerator and a denominator that means if function is if f of z equal to some phi of z upon z minus a raised to n then f of z has pole of order n if phi of z is analytic and value of this phi of z at a z equal to a is not equal to 0. So, here 
f of z equal to phi of z upon z minus here raised to n. Then f z has pole of order n. This power, power is nothing but order of the pole. Pole of order n. But there is one condition. What is that? This phi of z should be analytic function and phi of z should not be equal to 0. Then here z equal to a is called a pole of order n. Now let us see one example. First one. If f z equal to if f z equal to sin z upon z square. So you, we can expand this sin z. What is the expansion of sin z? z minus z cube by 3 factorial plus z power 5 by 5 factorial minus so on which is equal to 1 by z square into z minus 1 by z square into z cube upon 3 factorial plus 1 by z square into z power 5 by 5 factorial minus so on. So here 1 z cancels here, here, here you get cube. So sin z upon z square, sin z upon z square that becomes 1 by z minus z by 3 factorial plus z cube by 5 factorial minus so on. So here, one more definition here, see, uh, how can you identify whether uh, one term is existing, whether b1 by z minus a is existing. Here, if z is in the denominator, here if z has negative powers, here, summation n equal to 1 to infinity bn upon z minus a that means z is in the denominator so here you can say b summation n equal to 1 to infinity bn into z minus a raised to minus n that means z has negative power here. So, we have to observe this series. Here see 1 by z means z power minus 1 minus z by 3 factorial plus z cube by 5 factorial. So, how many terms they are containing negative powers? So, here only one term is containing negative power z power minus 1. Right. So, here then here this is which is pole then? How do you find pole? Here to get pole, equate z square to 0. That implies z equal to 0. z equal to 0 is a singular point. But here in this expansion, here z is containing negative powers. One term is containing negative powers. Therefore, z equal to 0 is a simple pole simple pole if more than one term they are containing negative powers then the pole will have some order so let us see such example also next example f z equal to e power z upon z cube so let us expand this 1 by z cube the expansion of e power z is 1 plus z plus z square by 2 factorial plus z cube by 3 factorial plus so on. So, if you multiply this 1 by z cube plus 1 by z cube into z plus 1 by z cube into z square by 2 factorial plus 1 by z cube into z cube by 3 factorial plus 1 by z cube into z power 4 by 4 factorial plus so on. Then what do you get here? 1 by z cube here one plus 1 by z square here plus 1 by 2 factorial into z here plus 1 by 3 factorial plus here 1 by 4 factorial but here z comes in the numerator 
So here z by 4 factorial plus z square by 5 factorial plus so on. So if you observe here, this is z power minus 3 plus z power minus 2 here plus z power minus 1 by 2 factorial, right? Plus 1 by 3 factorial plus z by 4 factorial plus z square by 5 factorial plus so on. So in this expansion, three terms they are containing negative powers. Here this is z power minus 3, z power minus 2 and z power minus 1. These three in these three terms z is having negative powers. So here if you equate this denominator to 0, here pole is z cube equal to 0 implies z equal to 0. So here z equal to 0 is a pole of order 3 because there are 3 terms which are containing negative powers. Now let us see one more example. f of z equal to here z square upon z square plus 1 into z plus 1 raised to 4. If you see this, here both the numerator and denominator, they are containing polynomials. So, by equating denominator to 0, we can find uh, singular points or poles. Here, equate z square plus 1 to 0 and z plus 1 raised to 4 to 0. Here, z square plus 1, if you equate it to 0, you can write it as z plus i into z minus i equal to 0 because here what do you get z plus i into z minus i multiply these z square minus z i plus z i minus i square that means here plus z i minus z i will get cancelled you get z square minus of minus 1 here z square minus of i square means minus 1. What do you get then? z square plus 1. So z square plus 1 can be written as z plus i into z minus i. That means here z plus i equal to 0 and z minus i equal to 0. z equal to minus i and plus i. If you see this one, here z plus 1 raised to 4 equal to 0 means z plus 1 into z plus 1 into z plus 1 into z plus 1, 4 times, you should consider 4 times equal to 0. So, z equal to minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 and minus 1. So, here same number is repeating, right? So, this is order 3, uh, sorry, order 4. Here this is order of this isolated singularity is 1, order 1, here also order 1. So, there are three singular points are what are those minus i plus i and minus 1 so here there are three poles or three singular points z equal to minus i z equal to i and z equal to minus 1 but this is of order 4 Okay, so these are, this is about pool. Now let us see third type. Third type is essential singularity. Here essential singularity. What is essential singularity? Here if principal part, if principal part of Lorentz series, Lorentz series contains infinite number of terms, infinite number of terms, then z equal to a is called essential singularity essential singularity 
okay and before that here one point is missed regarding pole if you see this pole if you find a limit limit z tends to some zero z tends to a here here limit z tends to a limit z tends to a f of z is equal to infinity if z equal to a is a pole if z equal to a is a pole then limit z tends to a f of z equal to infinity okay now here let us see this essential singularity here z equal to a is called essential singularity so or in other way we can say limit z tends to a f of z does not exist okay so here for isolated uh, for removable singularity here limit z tends to a f of z equal to exists and its value is finite value here pole for pole limit z tends to a f of z exists and its value is infinity but for essential singularity for essential singularity limit z tends to a f of z limit z tends to a f of z does not exist so by observing this limit also we can find these points we can classify these points so here limit z tends to f of z does not exist then third one is if you find limit point here limit point of zero is essential singularity essential isolated singularity because this essential even in non isolated singularity we may we find this essential singularity essential uh, if you find limit point of pole then we get uh, essential non isolated singularity that's why here i mentioned essential isolated singularity limit point of zero is essential isolated singularity what is zero if you find some phi of z by z minus a f of z equal to phi of z by z minus a uh, then if you equate numerator phi of z to 0 then we get 0 of this function or if you equate f of z to 0 then you get zeros of the function f of z zeros are nothing but roots roots of any polynomial function okay so let us see one example on this essential singularity so here first one is sin 1 by z f of z equal to sin 1 by z so here f of z equal to sin 1 by z if you expand this using the expansion of sine function you get 1 by z minus 1 by z whole cube by 3 factorial plus 1 by z raised to 5 by 5 factorial minus so on that is 1 by z minus 1 by 3 factorial into z cube plus 1 by 5 factorial into z power 5 minus so on. So, so here this is z minus 1 plus 1 by 3 factorial into z power minus 3 plus 1 by 5 factorial into z minus minus 5 z power minus 5 plus so on. So this series contains infinite number of terms here infinite uh, terms having negative powers infinite terms having negative powers of z therefore here z equal to 0 is essential singularity is called essential singularity if you see that second definition 
limit does not exist. So here if we take one more function f of z equal to e power 1 by z if you find left hand limit limit h tends to 0 h minus so e power 1 by here 0 minus h this is equal to e power 1 by minus uh, sorry here e power 1 by 0 1 by minus h right so you get e power minus infinity so what is the meaning of e power minus infinity here e power minus infinity means 1 by e power infinity 1 by infinity which is equal to 0 if you here this is left hand limit left hand limit now right hand limit right hand limit is you studied this concept in your 12th or 11th standards limit h plus tends to 0 here e power 1 by 0 plus h which is equal to e power infinity which is infinity here limit means if this point is a limit if left hand limit this is a right hand limit this is left hand limit if you find limit from this direction or from this direction you both they give same value then if lhs equal to r that is if lhs left hand limit equal to right hand limit then that function uh, here we can say limit exists if lhl equal to rhl but here left hand limit and right hand limit they are not equal so by finding limit point of zero we can find essential singularity so here let us see this third one in this third example here let us take fz equal to sin 1 by z so he is here 0 of f of z can be evaluated can be obtained by equating f of z to 0 so here sin 1 by z equal to 0 implies sin 1 by z equal to sin n pi that means 1 by z equal to n pi implies z equal to 1 upon n pi okay so here then here limit point limit point of z is limit n tends to infinity 1 upon n pi which is equal to 1 by infinity which is equal to 0 therefore z equal to 0 is essential singularity so all these points are important because we will find all these points whatever we have discussed now in Cauchy's integral theorem, Cauchy's integral formula and residue theorem. So in this session we have discussed definition of closed curve, definition of simply connected region, multi connected region and we revised analytic definition of analytic function and we discussed singularities, different types of singularities uh, by taking Lorentz series. So, first uh, we have seen Taylor series and Lorentz series. So, in point of Lorentz series, using Lorentz series, we have defined different types of isolated singularities. For we, so, we are going to use all these concepts in stating Cauchy's integral theorem and Cauchy's integral formula and residue theorem and also in solving problems or in application of those theorems. So, let us meet in next session. Thank you.